Hey everyone, how you doing? It's the uh, first week of October. I thought I'd come out today, maybe do do a little partridge hunt. And uh, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get one and we'll cook it up. And uh, if not, I'm going to come back here and uh, I got something to show you. Something that I made a while ago. Maybe you'd like to see it, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to uh, drop my pack here and uh, just go for a quick walk around here. Maybe stir up a partridge or something like that. And hopefully get one. You know, I really got to make a like a holster or a, a sheath or whatever you want to call it. Something that I can put on it and carry this with me. I don't always want to carry a bag around, especially when I'm walking and, and stuff like that. So I think I might just make something out of leather or something that you can hang off your belt or your side or something like that. I don't know. Today I'm just going to use the, the firebox stove. Just a little fire, cook some dogs, make me coffee. I know everybody and their dogs probably seen these, the firebox stove. So I'm not really going to talk about it too much. I just know I like uh, I like seeing other guys' gear and stuff like that, even if it's the same same gear. It's just cool. If you do get a firebox stove and you don't have them already, you'll probably want a pair of gloves. But I imagine if you're already into bushcrafting, you already got yourself a pair of leather gloves. Just because grabbing some of these hot pieces of metal, or pieces of metal, they get pretty hot. This is uh, my food storage bag. I, uh, I made it, uh, I think I made it maybe a year ago, it was uh, deer hide, my mom, uh, my mom she hunts and uh, this was a deer that she got the hide done years and years ago and uh, we've always just had pieces and scraps left over and uh, I took the rest of it since I got into leather making or leather work and uh, I decided I'd do that with it. And uh, I like it. It comes with me everywhere I go. Keeps uh, coffee, rice, noodles, salt and pepper, everything. This is nothing more than just a little leather bag, a coffee bag, that's about it. I wonder when somebody's going to make a titanium one of these stoves. Okay. Everybody complains about the two pounds and stuff like that that they weigh. Somebody eventually is going to come out with a titanium one. It's going to cost $750, but it's going to be light, right? I'll probably stick with my two pounds of steel. I really don't care. Burnt. Just the way I like them. So I brought something out with me, like I said, that I wanted to show you, and uh, I'd made it uh, 
a year ago, I guess, maybe. And uh, I'm going to continue to, to make more of them and, uh, you know, give them away or sell them or, you know, whatever. But I wanted to talk a little bit about it anyways before, uh, before I showed it. It was more or less wanted to talk about the, you know, admitting to the, to the fact that, you know, sometimes I get a, I get a case, case of the, you know, I, I, I want kind of thing, you know. If, if I'm watching some videos or something like that, and I'll see uh, I'll see other guys with a certain knife or or something like that. You know, I get that feeling like, oh, geez, you know, I really want that. You know, and it seems like everything everything's you know, especially in bushcraft and stuff like that. You know, people have found out that you know there's a market out there for it, and and you know there's some pretty outrageous prices when it comes to you know certain knives and axes and you know packs and stuff like that you know so I've always kind of felt like you know what why not just try and make it you know make it yourself you know and I believe that there's a reason why we are into bushcraft you know like it, we are crafty by nature you know we're good with our hands and and I'm not saying everyone everyone should do this but you know it, it try try your hand at making some of your own gear you know you'll probably find that you're probably good at it because if you've chosen a path of bushcraft you know you're already heading in that direction of, of a crafty kind of person a person that thinks outside the box you know so if you can you know if you, if you you know I'm I'm just getting into knife making you know I'm slowly learning through YouTube and stuff like that and people and books and whatnot uh, it just pick something up and, and try and go with it you know I've learned how to sew on my own uh, with very little help you know my my when my grandmother was alive uh, she showed me a little bit my mother too she she uh, kind of taught me how to run the machine the, the rule was you know if you needed something fixed when there's the machine you know you know how to run it so it, things like that have kind of just shaped me into doing it myself you know uh, being a hands-on kind of profession of woodworking and stuff like that I've always just had that natural ability to to make things and uh, you know I just uh, I would like to see a lot more people out there making making their own gear you know and it doesn't have to be you know perfect or anything like that as long as as long as you like it and, and it works in the end and that's really all that matters you know um, stop giving your money away to these ridiculous prices you know 300 and some dollars for a knife you know get out of here like I don't I don't care what people say about a, a knife that costs that much you know any knife that you choose that is of quality steel you know it's it's gonna do the same thing you know it, a knife's a knife in, in my opinion and I'm sorry to offend the knife loving people out there but you know I, this the knife that I carry it's it's a one it's a, it's a good quality I think I bought this for under $139 you know it's a it's a triple X knife I think their prices have one out because of the price of steel but they are one of the as far as I'm concerned they're one of the, the best prices around for a very good quality knife but anyways uh, I get, get, getting back to to what I was saying about uh, the I want, you know, I watched a lot of videos on, you know, you, you see a lot of famous and good bushcrafters, you know, carrying around axes and stuff like that, and it's something that I carry around, especially later on in the year, you know, after the fall and winter time and stuff like that. Not so much in the summer, uh, but up here in Canada in the winter time, you, you're probably best to have an axe with you just just because of the cold temperatures and stuff. But I see a lot of people with the the Weatherlings axe and the, you know the Granfords Brooks axe and, and stuff like that. I think there's one that Holtzford or something like that. Uh, and honest to God, they're probably amazing axes. The steel quality is probably you know great. Everything else, you know, the price tag that comes along with them is like everything else. It's it's high. Um, you know, for me, maybe not maybe not for everyone, but for me. You know, there, there's a, a hefty price tag on a, on a lot of that stuff, and uh, 
Anyways, hang on, I just gotta take a sip here. I had to wait till it cooled down. The one thing about the stainless steel mugs, eh? They stay hot for quite a while. So anyways, this is a, it's something that I just wanted to show you that, uh, you know, it's, it's an alternative, maybe uh, something that you can do on your own. This was, uh, this axe was a hatchet at one time and I found it, uh, I found it at a flea market and I paid something like five bucks or something like that for the head. The handle was shot. There was literally hardly any handle worth even speaking about. Uh, the head of the axe was painted orange and all rusted up, pitted. So it took me, it, it was quite a bit of work to, to, uh, to uh, bring it back to life. Um, luckily I've been fortunate. To, I've been able to buy tools along the way and, and stuff like that. So like a grinding wheel and stuff like, you know, sanders and stuff. But uh, it, this is something that you could do by hand. Uh, the reason for picking this this axe, and you'll still see them. This is uh, it's a, it's an axe from Sweden, and it'll say Sandvik on it. And some of them, I have I think one or two more. I have one anyways, maybe two more at home that are in rough shape that need to be fixed up. Uh, some of them will say Sandvik, uh, made in Sweden. This one says Sandvik. I'm going to assume it's from Sweden. Uh, it usually gives the weight of the head. Uh, this is one and a quarter pounds or 0.6 of a pound. Um, or a kilogram maybe that is, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, I, I grinded it all down, uh, sanded it smooth, I blued it, I fastened this handle to it. It's uh, it's a Brazilian rosewood handle. It has a very, very straight grain. Um, it's a it's impregnated with its own oil, as as most uh, most of the exotic woods uh, from Brazil come. Um, I put a leather wrap around it. Underneath the leather wrap, there's this. Uh, it's almost like a gel tape that you can wrap around an axe handle or something and I wrap that around first and then I put the put the leather collar around the top of it and you can actually feel it's squishy it's very comfortable in the hand and I could have made the the collar shorter but I wanted it to be able to put my hand up here in case I was doing something fine work or or whatever just playing around with the axe I kept the handle, the, the shape of the handle is just something sort of I've come up with, you know, looking at other axes and stuff like that. I, uh, it's, it goes skinny and it starts to get wider at the bottom here. And there's a bit of a, you can't really tell in the video, but there's a bit of a palm swell right here. So when you get to the bottom of the axe here, it's there's a swell in, in in the palm of your hand and it actually feels really good uh, for just swinging and chopping kind of thing but like I said you know I couldn't afford you know in my budget I can't afford a Weatherlings and or Grandford's Brooks and stuff like that and yeah I would like one but this probably just not feasible right now for me so I'm happy with with things that I can make on my own and for five dollars you know the wood that I had for a while it's been paid for for a long time so I can't I don't even really know how much I paid for it then uh, but the the handle could be made out of anything you know that scrap piece of leather doesn't have to be anything right it's uh, it, it's just there's a satisfaction in, in making your own equipment uh, I believe anyways and instead of going out and buying it you know and I, I know of course there's lots of stuff that you know you simply just can't make you know Maybe it's maybe you live in an apartment and you can't run a table saw kind of thing. I, I don't know. But for the most of it, you know, uh, I like to just try and make my own gear. And and uh, it, 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 there's a satisfaction, like I said, it, it makes me feel better. You know, like I made the, the food bag. Like I said, this was a, a deer that my mom had shot. 
quite a quite a few years ago and uh, we had uh, she had this tanned up and uh, I took it and sewed it dyed it made it into a little food storage bag so it'll be mine for for quite a while I made the the sheath for the axe as well you know I've been doing leather work now for quite a few years not quite a few maybe three four and uh, I enjoy it quite a bit it's a to me it's a break from from the woodworking and stuff like that I, you know I like to switch things up a bit not keep them so monotonous but uh, pretty much five bucks you know the head of the axe the wood I had the leather you know you come by it, it you get massive amounts of it at a time like this, so it's paid for. So that's my axe that I carry around with me. Like I said, I'll be doing more. Maybe I'll put out some videos of me actually making them and restoring them. But uh, anyways, this is it. I got a couple other things. Maybe I'll just grab them. Anyways, this is the axe. So like I said, it says Sandvik. And you can find these still in a lot of places. Some of them will say Sweden. Or made in Sweden but uh, I believe that they're good steel I've found nothing wrong with it I don't uh, you know there's not a lot of chipping or anything like that so I'm happy with it it's a to me it's a nice axe and definitely now has this bushcraft feel to it you know anyway I'll grab uh, what else do I got here coffee over okay I, uh, I made this on the back of the gun here it uh, it just holds three shells this is just my uh, Kui 12 gauge uh, single shot I like this gun it's got a full choke on it it uh, only shoots two and three quarter inch shells but uh, that doesn't really bother me too much so this was a piece of leather that I had uh, I made it so it held three different shells or three shells of whatever you want you know whatever you're using at the time you don't have to reach down in your pocket or the right there maybe switch it up put a couple different ones in there's uh, buckles here on the back you can take it off or on I just I pretty much just leave it on when I got this gun as well uh, it didn't have a a butt stock well it didn't have an end on the buttstock, I guess you'd say. So I had to make it as well. Uh, I just, actually, I think I made it out of some sort of a rosewood as well. And just fastened it on the bolts. But uh, again, it, it was a very, very, very cheap gun. Um, but I liked it. So I did a little bit of work on it, but brought it back to life. Uh, That's just something else that uh, we do. Another piece of leather work is the case that uh, I use for the firebox stove. Um, you can buy the one that they they have, but you know I figure since I'm already into leather work, I'll just make my own. You know I've made it so if you want to carry it on a belt, you can go you can and you know you want to get a strap and hook it on here and throw it over your shoulder carry it that way if you want you know it's an option but uh, again it's just another piece of gear that uh, that I make and and it makes me feel better knowing you know that uh, most of my gear a lot of my gear is, is stuff that uh, I've made myself so I'm gonna continue to do it and, and I hope uh, I hope there's other people out there that you know try their hand or at something you know and, do a little bit of leather work maybe or you know a bit of woodworking maybe do a handle for something or you know jump on a sewing machine I know I don't mean to offend anyone but I know it sounds weird you know a guy jumping on a sewing machine but uh, uh, sometimes if you just want things done a certain way you just have to do them yourself and I've, I've found you know a lot of I've made uh, my own anorak and stuff like that uh, I got a shirt here with me that I've made Sometimes you just have to do it yourself. Anyways, 
I just wanted to show you that axe and, and hopefully maybe, you know, there will be other guys out there that uh, can jump into something and uh, I'd like to see a little more homemade gear out there. Okay, stop giving the man all the money. You know, keep a bit for yourself and do a bit for yourself. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for your time.